really quick, um, if you have this book, um, if you have my book and you're attempting to do this by yourself first before watching the explanations, just stay for the brief little tutorial about what you should pay attention to. So for um, the stuff to pay attention to, I would go to page 333 in the book and just kind of review the transformation stuff um, because this is just going to all give you like a brief little cheat sheet of basically everything you need to know for this chapter. So I would just go and do that and then watch the video for um, chapter 44 where I explain this a little bit further. Um, so let's go and start now with number one. So it says for number one in the XY plane, F is at two comma seven. Which of the following are the coordinates of the image of F after reflecting F over the Y axis? So if you reflect over the Y axis, that means that your X is going to change signs. So this needs to become negative two. So negative two comma seven. So it would be C. In the XY plane, F is at 2 comma 7. Which of the following are the coordinates of the image of F after reflecting F over the X axis? So if you're reflecting over the X axis, the Y is the one that changes sign. So it's going to be 2 comma negative 7. So that would be J. When the transformation, this is applied to this point right here, the result is, so that means that, um, will both change signs? No. So when you're reflecting over the x-axis, that's when the y changes sign. And when you're reflecting over the y-axis, that's when the x changes sign. When the transformation, um, this one is applied to that, the result is, so this is basically going to be your x and your y. So x is negative 2, y is negative 1. So now to turn it into this, you have to do 3 times what your x is, 3 times negative 2, comma, 2 minus negative one, uh, two minus negative one for your y. So then this would just turn into a plus. So then this is going to be three times negative two is negative six comma two plus one is going to be three. So it would be negative six comma three, which is just a right there. So um, now let's go to this one right here. So we have four, oops. For number four, we have given that one, uh, f of x is equal to 1 over x, which of the following is the graph for f of negative x minus 3? And hold on, let me actually just see, because I wanted to make sure there's no other things that I missed that I wanted to talk about first. Sorry, I got frazzled earlier with all the noise. Um, yeah, there's no edits or anything. Okay, good. So then let's go back to this. Okay, given that f of x is equal to 1 over x, which of the following graphs is the graph of all of this? So you can remember the parent graph and you could say, okay, what transformations are being applied to this? And you could say, okay, well, if I have minus 3 here, then that means that I'm going to be um, going to the right by um, going to the right by 3. And then if I have the uh, negative in front of the x, that is a reflection, which means that I'm going to be reflecting over the y axis. So this is basically saying I'm going right 3 and then reflecting over the um, y-axis. Now, if you don't remember your transformation stuff, you could literally just plug in points, like uh, like figure out what these should be and then plug them in if you want. Um, but this is a little bit easier if you already like know what the parent function is, one over x, because that's one of the parent functions we memorize, which looks basically like this. But again, you could plug in points and say, okay, for f of x for f of x um, and uh, equaling one of one over x. If x is one, then f of x has to equal one. So then you know that this is like one comma one. And then if x is negative one, then what does uh, f of x or y have to be? Well, that would have to be negative one. So this is negative one over one in the original um, negative one over, uh, negative one comma negative one in the original parent function. So then you can kind of see that and be like, okay, what happens if I go to the right three and then reflect across the y axis? And you could kind of do that um, in your own little table if you want. Um, sorry, that's my dog. Okay, so, but what we can do instead to kind of like make it easy on ourselves is just kind of look at those one individual points. We could just say one comma one. What does that turn into if we go to the right three and then we reflect over the y-axis? Well, right three means that this would have to be four for the new x because you're going to add three to that. It's going to the right by three. And then for the y... Um, it's just going to be 1, and then when we reflect over the y-axis, it's going to change the sign of the x, so then it's going to be negative 4 over 1, or comma 1, I mean. 
So then that's that. So you would look for, okay, I need a point that is negative four comma one. And then for the other point, negative one comma negative one, you could say, okay, if I'm going to the right by three, whoops, that was a bad arrow. If I'm going to the right by three, I'm gonna add three again. So then it's going to be negative one plus three is positive two. And then we're gonna keep the negative one. And now I'm gonna reflect it over the Y axis. So then it's going to be negative two comma negative one. Cause if I reflect over the Y axis, the X has to change sign. So I'm looking for one of the graphs that has these points, negative four comma one and negative two comma negative one. So if I'm looking at this, this could be negative four comma one, this could be negative two comma negative one. So that one, this doesn't match at all. That doesn't match, that doesn't match. So it would have to be F. And that one doesn't match either. But um, yeah, so there are a bunch of different ways to go about it. So then you could say for number five, the function, this right here is translated three units to the left and two units up to form a new function. What is the equation for the function? So three units to the left means that you have to add three in here inside with the X. And then two units up means that you have to add two out here to this number. So that means that this would have to turn into X plus two. So automatically, you know, it has to be either A or B. And then if you add two to this number, it becomes six. So then it has to be B right there. Yeah, sorry, I'm OCD, so I have to fix that. Okay, so now let's go to number six. Sam has recreated a life-size version of the XY coordinate plane. He stands at the point three comma two. How is it, how is D plus two? Um, because you're going up by two units. So whenever you go up by two, you have to add two to the function. So like if you go up by two, you add two. If you go down by two, you subtract two. So it says, Sam has recreated a life-size version of the XY coordinate plane. He stands at the point three comma two. He moves two times. First, he moves at a speed of 0 0.6 coordinate units per second per, um, per second for five seconds horizontally in the positive X direction. Then he moves at the same speed vertically in the positive Y direction for three seconds. Where is Sam located? So let's start with the horizontal um, movement. So he's going in the positive X direction by um, whatever... Um, whatever distance is um, described by this. So remember, distance is equal to the rate or the speed is another way to say rate times time. So to find the distance of the first movement, we would just say, okay, that's going to be, the distance of the first movement is gonna be the speed, 0 0.6 times the amount of seconds, which is five. So the distance he moves at first is going to be three. So he's moving three units in the positive X direction. So we have to add three to that three right there. So three plus three. Now for the second movement, for distance number two, it's the same rate, so we still are going 0 0.6, but for a different amount of time. This time it's going to be going positive in the positive y direction for three seconds. So we have to do the speed times three, which is gonna be 1.8. So it's going in the positive y direction, so we have to add 1.8 to two, so two plus 1.8. So that's going to be six comma 3.8. So then that's going to be h. So then for number seven, it says in the XY coordinate plane, point blah, blah is reflected across the Y axis. If B prime is the resulting image, then what are the coordinates of B prime? So it's reflecting across the Y axis. So that means that the X has to change sign. So we just have to change the sign for four to negative four. So it would be negative four comma negative five, which would just be A. So now let's go to number eight. It says point a is located at three comma six in the xy plane. Point A is translated left two coordinate units and up four coordinate units. What are the coordinates of the point after the translation? So it's translated, let's start with left. It's going left by two units. So that means that we have to do three minus two. And then now let's do the up four units. So then up four units would mean that we have to start at six and go up by four. So then this would just be one comma 10. So then that would be F right there. This is the only way I'm going to actually start studying the SAT. <laughs> well, hopefully it helps. Um, but this is for ACT right now, but some of this could help you on the SAT. So then number nine, it says the graph of the function f of x is equal to x squared is shown below. If the graph of f of x is translated four units to the right, then which of the following points could be the image, could be on the image of the graph after this translation has occurred. So we see that there's a point right there, negative two comma four. 
and we want it to be translated four units to the right. So that means that we have to add four to negative two, and then nothing's happening with the y. So then this would be two comma four. So the answer would be C.